Hello friends. Now we are discussing in real number there is an important theorem, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic? You see every composite number can be expressed as the product of primes. So before we start the theorem, first we discuss which numbers are prime numbers. The prime numbers which can be which of the factors are only the number itself and the number 1. Say for example, 3. 3 is a prime number. So, which numbers are prime number? Which are divisible by itself and uh, by number 1. That is 3. 3 can be written as 3 into 1. So, it is divisible by 3 and divisible by 1. 5. 5 into 1. But 1 is neither prime nor composite. So now which numbers are composite numbers? The numbers which can be expressed as a product of primes. Say for example 24. This can be expressed as 2, 2, 2, 3. 2 into 2, 4, 4 into 2, 8, 8 into 3 is 24. So, this can be, or it can be written as 4 into 6, or it can be written 8 into 3. But these are not prime numbers. 4, 6, 8 are not prime. Now, now come to this one. Fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Here we say that every composite number, composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. And this factorization is unique. Apart from the order in which the prime factors are occur. Now, say for example 24. When you take 6 into 4, and 6 can be express in prime 3 into 2 and then 4 2 into 2 so we are getting 3 into 2 is coming 3 times so 3 2 raised to the power 3 and again 24 is equals to 8 into 3 so it is coming 2 2 2 into 3 that is coming 2 into 3. So here it is given that it is unique. So this is the uniqueness. Here we are getting 3 and then 2 raised to the 3. And here it is getting 2 to the power 3 into 3. So this is the uniqueness. So apart from the order, so they, they are not in the same order, but their uniqueness is there are 2 3's and 1, 3. We are also 2, 3's and 1, 3. So, this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. Say for 36, 12 into 3. So, 12 can be break into 2 into 2 into 3 into 3. So it is coming 2 raised to the power 2, 3 raised to the power 2. Another way, 4 into 9, 2 square into 3 square. So anyway, if you can be expressed in the form of prime factors. Let's see an example here. Now we will be discussing a very important example that whether 6 to the power n can end with 0. Can it end with 0 means see the number 50 end with 0 or 70 end with 0 or 1, 2, 0, 0 end with 0. So 6 to the power n will expand by taking natural number n 
as 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 cannot be end with 0. Let us see 6 to the power n. If you do the prime factorization of 6 to the power n, if it is end with 0, then 5 must be a factor. 5 must be a prime factor of 6 to the power n. But if you see 6 to the power n, you can write 6 as 3 into 2 raised to the power n, that is 3 to the power n into 2 to the power n. So, getting n factors of 3 and n factors of 2, but there is no 5 here because we cannot proceed further because we know prime factorization here is unique. So, only we are getting some factors of 3 and some factors of 2, no 5 as a prime factor. Therefore, 6 to the power n cannot end with digit 0. Another example, here it is given that x y 7 into 11 into 13 plus 13 is a composite number. The question actually, these numbers are prime numbers. The sum is a product of this and this, uh, 7, 11, 13 plus 13, whether it will be a composite number or it will be a prime number. Even. So, if you write 7 into 11 into 13 plus 13, so if you take 7 into 11 plus 1 whole into 13, we are getting this is 7 into 11, 77 plus 1, 78 into 13. Now, 78 you can break up as Thirteen into thirteen. Now this six also can be break up. No, this will not be thirteen. So three into two into thirteen into thirteen. So it is a composite number. This proves that this is a composite number. Okay. For testing your understanding of this lesson. And more videos log on to www.tubelessons.net.